So I'm in the middle of migrating a pretty complicated web app to Ember, and I thought I'd share some of my experiences with you. Um, so I work for Claimable. Uh, we make basically a web application for the insurance industry. So it's very niche, very specific. It's a B2B app. Um, and it basically helps uh, insurance companies manage the entire claim process. So it's very process driven. Uh, the current version looks a bit like this. Uh, not bad looking for a business app, especially an insurance uh, industry app. They, these guys are hideously underserved when it comes to good software. You'd be amazed at how many of our clients still use fax, paper, Excel spreadsheets, and to think these guys run our economy, it's pretty scary. Um, but this is claimable in its current form. Um, it basically lets uh, the, the back office staff, so the claim handlers, process a claim. So the idea is that it's a smoother experience for the policyholder or, or the, uh, the person making the claim, basically. So you can see it lets people upload documents, take notes, that kind of thing. Um, it is written currently in Cappuccino, which I don't know if anyone's heard of. It's a fairly obscure framework. It's basically Coca for the web. Um, and we started using it maybe two or three years ago when it first came out. At the time, it was pretty revolutionary, actually. It did some things that now we're kind of taking for granted. You know, um, <clears throat> One of those, I think, was bindings. Um, and the other one was things like lazy loading and a really good table view component. There was a lot about it that drew me to it. So it seemed like the perfect thing to use for a, a big, complicated B2B web application like this. However, uh, as time's gone by, in my opinion, their direction has lost focus, or maybe it's got too much focus, because I think the problem is that they're so religiously fanatical, this is the core team members I'm talking about, about uh, porting Coca to the web, they've forgotten what is great about a web application, basically HTML and CSS. So uh, a good example that I always fall back on is Recently, well, not recently, but a, you know, in the, one of the final versions of the current current application, I wanted to add a, just an A tag, just a link. And the way to do that was considered a hack because um, it was so strictly Objective-J and Coca that you had to drop down into the DOM and add this a, you know, inject this A tag into the uh, HTML in a way that you wouldn't expect to. And it kind of frustrated me. Um, so I started to look for other solutions. And that's where Ember comes in. Ember. Um, so I think at the time, uh, Cappuccino was a good choice because it, don't get me wrong, it's been great and it's, it's pretty clever, to be honest. There's some amazing things it does, but I think it does, it fails mostly in one, in one place and that is forgetting <coughs> what's great about the web. Um, the fact that you have to write Objective-J code the whole time and you don't even, uh, it abstracts so far away from the DOM and CSS and HTML that it's very difficult to style anything or, or, or um, even, for example, if you wanted to hand your, um, your app to a, a, a front-end web designer, they wouldn't be able to interpret the DOM. It injects all these divs all over the place with really weird class names and things. So it's pretty unmaintainable from that point of view. So um, I made the decision maybe six months ago to rewrite the whole thing in Ember. Um, and I thought, well, we're not even halfway through that process yet. So this is fairly embryonic, what I'm about to tell you. It's still fairly new. I'm still learning Ember. I know Cappuccino really well because I've been using it for two years. But um, what I thought might be interesting is if I share kind of these three things that, uh, to me, I don't want to take for granted about Ember. I actually changed the name of my talk. I started out with it being five lessons learned. And I thought maybe that was too many, so I made it down to three. And as I started to think about the lessons I've learned in so far using Ember, I realized that those are actually the things that I started to take for granted and I don't want to. Um, so fairly high level, but the router, we all know about this. Um, to me, it's like magic. I think it's amazing. Um, obviously, you've got things like it forcing your uh, URL-led design. But before that, I have an experience with writing my own. I didn't know at the time that I was writing my own router, um, but with my first uh, experience with Cappuccino, I distinctly remember the moment where I had a tab working and you could change tabs and it was loading the content and it was all Ajax. And then I reloaded the page and it reset to the, to the root, you know, the root root. Um, and I realized that, okay, it's my responsibility as a developer to change the URL and pass the URL. Uh, it seemed kind of, I guess, expected at the time. Now, in hindsight, it seems ridiculous. So there I was writing this what is probably a horrendous router, um, 
that every time I clicked anything in my app, it would update the URL um, and then pass that when it, when it reloaded. Um, so for me, I think one of the single best things about uh, Ember is this, this router and the fact that it forces you to think about your routes before anything else. Um, and for a, a big application like Claimable um, that has to remember state, um, it's perfect because it means that we can strictly think about the different states the application can be in, not as an afterthought. So for me, I don't want to take this for granted. You get this for free just from using Ember. Um, so not only does it force you to think about how you architect your application, you get this great functionality as part of the package. Um, and you know, it turns out that users click back a lot. So our users are real technophobes. They're, some of the requests we get are, are crazy. You know, it's, it's, it's pretty, pretty difficult to support, actually. Um, and they're clicking back the whole time. In our current version, if you click back, it goes back to Google, because that's probably what they were looking at before, <laughs> before um, using our app. So um, yeah, we could, we could mess around with the, the, the history API and what have you. But again, you get it for free with Ember. So it's great. For me, I don't want to take this for granted. It, it's perfect. Um, you know, we're, we're delivering what we're promising. It comes back to this whole thing about <laughs> Cappuccino is a web framework, but it forgets that the single most defining thing about a web application or a website <coughs> is probably the URL. Uh, so that's great. I love it. And the other thing as well that um, we've learned is that you encounter all sorts of problems with long-running apps. And by that, I mean our users typically log in at 9 in the morning and use it all day without reloading uh, until like 5 <laughs> p.m. Um, and if I didn't know what a memory leak was before, I do now. You know. Um, so uh, again, I'm not wanting to, to criticize Cappuccino because it's a fantastic framework, but it's huge. The memory footprint is huge. The, the payload is huge. So we would have these problems um, on less than ideal browsers and hardware, to be honest, that wouldn't help, uh, where users would just, it would crash. It would just, they'd get that weird script timeout error thing. Um, it was a big problem. So again, with, with Ember, I think it really encourages uh, architecting your app in a URL-led way um, that helps you with all of these other problems that we've certainly encountered. Uh, so the next thing. Uh, Backend agnostic. Um, it was really interesting to hear the previous talk um, about how they're stuck with these legacy backends. Uh, we're fortunate that we, we have our own backend, so uh, we've always maintained that. Um, even with the original version, there's strictly a, a RESTful API and a, a, a JavaScript UI. But um, because, uh, because the original version, there wasn't really any default, uh, well, there wasn't the equivalent of Ember data. There was talk of having core data but it never really happened. Um, so it meant that you're on your own, basically. Um, so what we started doing was finding ourselves solving bugs in the UI by just changing the API, which is kind of cheating. And it, it breaks away from that purity of having the two things completely separate. Because what we want to be able to do is swap out the API, right? Not only that, but um, a lot of our customers use our API. So it needs to be really uh, well documented. It needs to be very consistent um, and almost so that a developer can, can discover the URLs without having to necessarily um, dig around too much. It's kind of obvious. But we found that previously we had to break that um, and, <coughs> in my opinion, corrupt the API a little bit um, in order to suit the front end. But again, what I love about Ember is that Ember data um, means you um, it truly is back-end agnostic. And not only that, but it really respects RESTful conventions and encourages an API-led design, which again, um, for me, my, I even view the, uh, our main product as being the platform, actually, the, the, the API, rather than just the interface, because we have mobile apps in development as well. And like I said, our customers consume our API. So it's pretty important. Uh, OK, the last thing I wanted to mention was just this general concept of under-promising and over-delivering. Before I made the decision to move to Ember, it dawned on me that I was doing the opposite. I was over-promising, under-delivering, <coughs> which really bothers me. Um, <coughs> and I think I'm not just a developer. Part of my role is also involved with the marketing and um, the product design side of, of this application. So it's really important to me to be able to um, deliver what we're promising, or even better, over-promise, uh, sorry, under-promise, over-deliver. Um, and again, I think Ember really helps with that because, like I said, we had this thing that looked like a native app because it was built that way. Um, but basic things like the back button didn't work. And um, <clears throat> there were all these other things that the, these visual cues would kind of make the user think that they could do certain things. Maybe it's drag and drop a particular element because it looked like a native app, but they couldn't. 
and it, it really sucked. So I think, again, by not having um, this obsession with porting a, uh, a native framework to the web and actually acknowledging what makes the web great, so URLs and HTML and CSS, but bringing in all the things that are good from native frameworks like bindings and things like that and components, you get the best of both worlds. And for me, that's been really a really sort of um, <coughs> encouraging approach that has, I think, improved our, our sort of architecture of the, of the product and the way we've structured the application. Um, and the last thing I'll mention is, is just speed. Um, so we're used to, I think, 4.7 megabytes as the payload, which on anything less than Chrome on like a decent machine doesn't run very fast. Um, forget mobile. So again, I think uh, <coughs> I'm not going to take for granted how quick Ember is. I've seen you know, blog posts about it not being quick, but in my opinion, it really is. And I think, what is it, 47 kilobytes or something like that? It's, it's pretty good. It's a small payload, and you get a lot of functionality for that. Um, so that's it, really. I kind of just wanted to share what I've learned to date. Like I said, it's still in the early stages. Um, the bottom line is I really love Ember. I'm pleased I, um, I sort of uh, took that approach and backed the right horse. Um, so hopefully I'll come back at some point and share a bit more in-depth detail with you <coughs> when I've gone further down the process. Um, we'll hopefully by the autumn have something, well, have it completely migrated as well. Um, that is it. Thank you very much. We're going to only be able to take a few questions because we okay. need to get to the pub Absolutely. and we need to leave the room, but more importantly, the pub. <laughs> so um, when this is all done, it's the water poet, it's left and then left and then left again and you'll see it straight there. We'll see you all there, but questions. I was only curious uh, if you are writing tests in this process of... That's a good question. Um, I forgot to mention that. Um, maybe that's a topic of another talk, but in theory, yes. In practice, no. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, I mean, the, we intend to, and I think, I don't know, personally, I need to do some, some research about testing in Ember. Um, I don't feel that qualified to comment on it, only that I've heard that some people say it's bad, some people say it's really good. I'm inclined to believe the latter. Um, maybe it's just a documentation issue or something. So um, at the moment, we're kind of doing it without tests. Um, the API is tested but the front end isn't, but we will. That's the short answer. Maybe if I come back and talk again, I can talk about testing. Um, yeah. Because actually one thing um, that is important is because it's such a complicated application and we have, uh, because it's so process driven, what our customers do, we need to really test things. There's lots of um, scope for regression bugs when we add a feature and then it breaks something else. So testing is absolutely a priority. I will vouch for Ember's acceptance testing. Really? HP, wonderful. Really? really, really there we go. Yeah. Any more questions? Yeah. Uh, have you considered other frameworks when doing the decision to migrate? And if so, why did you eventually go for Ember? That's a really good question. Um, I did. And at the back of my mind, I was very conscious of kind of making a wrong decision. Um, like I said, because it's um, my position is that. I'm also running the company as well as developing this thing. Um, at the back of my mind, I'm always thinking about the business side of things. And it felt, me choosing Cappuccino felt like a mistake, basically, to put it bluntly. Um, and it you know, cost a lot of time and resources. So I was particularly sensitive to that. So I did, uh, did make the point of being quite considered about it. I did review just Angular, really. I, I sort of looked at, I did some shallow research into most of them. But I knew what I needed. It needed to be like a, like a, a big framework. Like, um, um, what am I thinking of? Um, <clears throat> what's a small framework? That everyone, but Backbone. Backbone was clearly not going to cut it. Um, so I kind of discounted that and just narrowed it down to like Angular and Ember. Um, and I kind of said to myself, I'm not going to rush this decision. My timing was actually Ember Conf in, what was it, March? Must be March. Yeah, that was my timing. I, I booked a ticket to that and said, right, by the end of this trip, I will have decided one way or the other. I think in reality and in hindsight, my decision was already made. One of the big factors was the community. I can't sort of uh, stress enough how important that is because the cappuccino community is minuscule, like really tiny. Um, so seeing going to Ember, uh, EmberConf and seeing the, the community and not just the size of it, but how... Um, 
how sort of um, thriving it is, you know, um, really encouraged me to just take the plunge and say, right, we're going to rewrite this thing in Ember. Doing a rewrite is always a, uh, a big um, question for a business, and I, and I don't know. I mean, the, 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 soon thereafter, as you start to try to figure out ways, there's a way to incrementally bring things in. It, it, did you ever discuss whether there was, I mean, it seems like there's a lot of, up, you know, <coughs> Uh, things that might block that from happening from the UI perspective, and um, uh, cappuccino being so uh, native. Yeah, it, it would, it would be. Else, I think it would be impossible. impossible. With the way, yeah, with the way. Um, one of the things cappuccino is really bad at is integrating with any other frameworks. You can't even use jQuery with it, really. It just doesn't. It's kind of a bit of a beast in that regard. It, 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 it's that or nothing. Um, which at the time, again, it seemed perfect because it's. It, it, they even say, to be fair, they say on their website, you know. This is um, meant for building like native class, big app. You wouldn't use it to build a blog or something. It's really for this very specific thing, which seemed perfect. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't. It wouldn't be possible to sort of do a little bit in Ember and still have some of it in Cappuccino. It has to be all or nothing, really. I think. It, and if it was possible, it would take more time and resources than just rewriting it. That would be the clincher. So the time frame for when you're done is, is when? Well, I'm aiming for like mid. Autumn, so I guess that's like October kind of time. Um, I mean, one thing that's good about it in terms of uh, the product point of view is that we, we know, and this is what's different to when we were building the first versions, we know what it should do. We have all the features, I and mean, that's not the problem. The feature set isn't the problem. Uh, yeah, you know, being in 2014 rather than 2012 has afforded us some new features and things, um, but we actually know what we're, what we're doing. We have everything mapped out, so it's quite a different process. It's more like we're building on what we, all of the sort of, um, I don't know, I guess the sort of, the design decisions that we made and spent so long agonizing over, uh, we're building on that. And rather than sort of, I, I don't know, from, from my point of view, I think that building an app like this is as much about taking a step back and architecting it as it is writing the code. So the kind of the architecture bit, in my mind, in terms of the layout of the screens is done. So it's less overwhelming than it was building it in the first place. Okay. So 